Why do so many console gamers spread these lies about PC gaming all over the internet? Are they jealous? Are they just haters? Are they just trying to justify their purchase? Are they worried that more people will go to the PC and kill the consoles off? Or are they just plain stupid and just keep repeating what they keep hearing? Who knows? It could be any one of those, but I'm tired of it. I would like to tell you the facts and debunk these lies that keep popping up. Let me assure you, I am not some PC elitist trying to put down your choice of platform. I honestly don't care what platform you choose as long as you have fun with it. Look, I'm a gamer too. I play games on any platform if it's worth playing on. I was primarily a console gamer all my life up until this generation because I personally don't like the PS4 and Xbox One. And when I give reasons why I don't like those consoles, I use facts, not lies. The real purpose of this video is to inform potential gamers who want to jump onto PC gaming. I understand when you hear all these lies all the time, it would make anyone worried about jumping over to it because you're just not sure what's true and what's not. I'm going to bring up the most common lies that I hear about PC gaming and I'm going to tell you the truth about what it really is. Okay? So let's get started. 1. You have to spend at least 2000 on a PC to even match the console's performance. This is false. My PC blows away the consoles and I spent a little over $800. I could have spent way less and still surpassed the consoles, but I want to splurge a little extra. And that's what's great about building your own PC. You choose what goes into it and how much you want to spend. It's your choice. If you want to spend $2,000 on a PC, you can, and that would keep your rig way ahead of the consoles for years. But you don't have to. Also, it doesn't take a, a whole lot to surpass the PS4 and Xbox One. Sony and Microsoft act like these consoles were state of the art, but these consoles were using old, outdated tech at release, which is why the Pro and Scorpio are coming out. The console's graphics are similar to medium-high settings on your PC, and console games are usually capped at 30 frames per second. Believe me, 60 frames per second makes a huge difference. Anyone who says it doesn't is lying or never experienced it for themselves. If you don't believe me, please go try out for yourself. Two. You have to upgrade every two to three months or every year. This is complete BS. I built my PC three years ago and I can run most games on Ultra, if not that on high. I have no need to upgrade for years to come. Again, you only upgrade when you want to. You will never be forced to upgrade unless your hardware is extremely out of date. For some reason, console fans think PC gamers upgrade when every new part comes out and it just doesn't happen. Nobody does that. It's just, it, it's nonsense. Three, building a PC is too difficult and expensive. Again, first off, it's not too expensive. I admit, getting into PC gaming will usually be at a higher cost than the consoles, but you can always buy an old pre-built PC and just buy a few new parts for it, and it won't be that costly. Also, you will save in the long run on games, because on PC, there are deals and free games everywhere, and unlike a console that you will have to eventually move on to the next-gen system, your PC will last you forever if you take care of it. Having access to your games for the rest of your life is just amazing. And I understand the idea of building a PC can be scary. But there are plenty of sites where people will help you like Tom's Hardware or PC Part Picker. And there are tons of YouTube videos on build guides and how to put a PC together. There is really no excuse to not know how to build a PC. On YouTube, there are little kids who put together their own PCs. Also, a lot of videos will take you step by step. That's how I learned how to build my first PC. And after I built mine, I loved it so much, I built my wife her own gaming PC. But if you don't want to build a gaming PC, you can always just buy a pre-built one, which I don't really suggest, but you can, because it's gonna, it's gonna cost more money up front than it will if you build your own. So that's why I suggest you learn to build your own, because it's not that hard. Four, you have to use a keyboard and mouse, and you have to use a small monitor and sit at a desk. No, you don't. PC gaming gives you freedom of choice in every aspect, including this. I use a controller for, for some games on PC. Others, I use keyboard and mouse. It's my choice what I use. Most all modern games have controller capabilities. And for the ones that don't, in older PC games, there's always free programs you can download to set up a controller for those games. 
but I do recommend you try to learn how to use keyboards and mouse because when it comes to FPS's, it is superior to a controller because of how accurate the mouse is compared to thumbsticks. And no, you don't have to use a small monitor and sit at a desk. You can easily plug your PC into your flat screen, your huge flat screen TV and sit on a couch or your bed. Steam even has big picture mode, which makes the interface more like a console interface. Also, if anyone tells you PC will look bad on TV, is lying. Five, you have to download patches manually. No, you don't have to download your patches manually. Usually when you buy a GPU, it comes with a software that can optimize your games for you. And if not that, if you have Steam or Origin, which most likely which most likely you will, they update your games automatically without you even having to do so. So I don't know where they get this idea that you have to do it manually. It, it does it for you. So don't let anyone tell you that that BS. Six. PC has no exclusives. I seriously don't get this one. Not only does PC have more exclusives that range from the start of PC games up to the modern era, but PC has whole genres that don't even come to consoles, like RTSs, space simulators, MMORPGs, and MOBAs. And that's just a few examples, and let alone the thousands of great indie titles. Don't even try to say that those genres don't matter, because the most because most console gamers haven't even played any games from those genres. And that's just your preference. It's not a fact. And just because these liars don't like indies doesn't mean others don't like indies. Number seven, PC always gets bad ports. Again, not true. Most games run perfectly fine at release, but there are really only a handful of games that aren't optimized at release. And usually these are fixed fairly quick by the developer or even by actual gamers. Eight, games always crash. Not true. I don't usually have trouble with most games, but I have had a share of games that crash. Most of them are older games and or they were just games that were just badly optimized. I, but I do have a bad experience with one game and that is Crisis. For some reason when so many people buy this game off Steam or Origin it does not run. It goes to black. It starts up and then it crashes at the start over and over again and then it was just annoying. I was like what the fuck is happening? I even made a whole video about how to fix that. It's an older video it's not one of my best videos uh, quality wise, but I make it understandable how to fix Crisis to where that never happens again. But see, but that's the great thing about PC though. If there is a problem, there is usually a fix you can find just by Googling it. Nine, all games have to be installed and it takes forever. This is this one is interesting because yes, all games must be installed to play, to play them. But that is the same with these modern consoles as well. I have never had a game on my PC take longer than three hours to install. Most of the time it takes about one and a half hours to two hours. But here's one for you. On the PS4, I bought Mortal Kombat XL for it because they said it wasn't coming to PC, which now we know that was a fucking huge lie, but whatever. I hate NetherRealm and I hate Warner Bros. now. All they do is fucking lie, but whatever. I put the disc in around 11 a.m. And it didn't finish installing until after midnight. Yeah, it took the whole day. I didn't even get to play it on the day I received it. But again, downloads and install times will vary. But I do have a good internet speed. Like I said, my PC games, and yes, I mean the AAA ones, will finish in less than two hours. But I have not had a PS4 game finish installing without taking at least five hours and up. Again, for everyone, it may vary because of your speeds but this is my experience with my with the ps4 and pc also i know for a fact it's not just me because my brother has a ps4 and that's why he hates playing on it because he has to install the fucking game and it takes hours before he can even play it 10 pc only has indie games not true at all there are lots of indie games yes but that's because it's an open platform and new young development teams can easily get their start by putting their game on PC. But PC usually gets every major third party game that is released. Shit, PC gamers even get Xbox One exclusives now. For every one game PC doesn't get, P the PC market will usually get at least 50 games that will never go to consoles during that time. Also, there are some games from developers that never even come to the consoles. Or if they do, they're usually bad ports. Now. 
a one company I know that's great on PC that doesn't really do doesn't do console ports that much is Blizzard. Now, sure, they have Overwatch on consoles, but this is why that sucks because after this gen is over, Blizzard won't keep supporting that version because no one's going to keep playing it. Everyone's going to move on to the next console. So for them to keep supporting it, they would have to re-release it again and you would have to rebuy it again for them to keep supporting it. But while that happens, still people will still be playing it on PC and it will still be, it still will be supported on PC for years to come. That's one thing that sucks about consoles that you have to keep upgrading and you have to keep buying the games over and over again because or then they just won't come out no more. At least on PC, a game can still be supported for years. There are still people playing the original Call of Duty online today on PC. Yeah, that's an old game and people are still playing. People still play Quake 3. People play people still play Doom. It doesn't matter if it's old. If a game's fun, people will play it for years. You won't get that on consoles. Now that those lies have been debunked, I just want to go through a few awesome things about PC gaming. Like mods, yeah, mods are great because you can make an already great game even more fun and better, like Skyrim, Fallout, and plenty of older titles as well. Games are so much cheaper, and that's the biggest benefit to PC gaming. It's so cheap in the long term because there are free games and amazing deals all the time. You can get brand new games for like $20 to $40 on launch day, while it will always be $60 on consoles. No online service. You can chat and play with friends or any gamers without being charged for a pointless online service fee like Xbox Live and PSN. And no, that $60 does not go to servers. It goes to Microsoft and Sony. And who knows if they even put that back into the online. Because the ones paying for those servers are the developers. They're for their games, they're paying for those servers. Sixty dollars does not pay for them pay for those servers. So I don't know what why they're even charging you for. It just doesn't make no sense. Also, adding more storage to your PC for games is so easy. While it's a hassle on PS4, I had a bitch time having to upgrade the PS4's limited hard drive. On PC, you can have endless amounts of storage space, which is a huge plus. It's so much easier. Then there is the endless library. You can pretty much play every game from history on a PC. From classic PC games to classic and older consoles, arcade machines, and all the great new games from AAA to indie. It's really an endless amount of games. So yeah, there is really no need to miss those handful of console exclusives on PS4 because there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of games to play on PC and it's it really is insane how many how many games there are to choose from well again this video is not to shit on consoles or their fans but its main purpose is to clear up all those lies that are popping up everywhere about gaming PCs by console gamers that are either just bitter or just ignorant this is a guess, but I think console gamers are truly scared because they see in this generation alone that there are so many console gamers moving to PC and have no interest in ever going back. I'm one of them. Seriously, check out any video about PC gaming and you will always see people in the comment section talking about how they moved or are about to move to PC. The number of PC players is rising very fast because for the most of us, the consoles just isn't convenient enough anymore and are more trouble than they are worth. And it's just getting too fucking expensive in the long run. So I have hoped I have helped to inform you about the truth of PC gaming. And if you're still scared to make the jump, don't worry. There are plenty of people online who are more than willing to help you get started.